Hi, I'm Jenny Fish from One Big Happy Yarn Company. We want to be your local yarn shop no matter where you are. Welcome back to our Cable Cowl and Fingerless Mitts Knit Along. This week, I will show you with some simple tweaks, you can turn this Cable Cowl into these fingerless mitts. Remember, you can get the kit with the printed pattern and yarn at OneBigHappy.com. Let's get started. So to make these fingerless mitts, we simply cast on the same amount of stitches as we do for the cowl. We work the two rows of garter stitch, then we go into our cable pattern. The only thing different is that we stop after eight repeats and then we seam it up. And I'm going to show you some of that and go over that with you. Number one, you want to cast on the 42 stitches, set up your stitch markers exactly the same and then um, we're gonna work through that cable pattern for you. I wanna remind you that our cable pattern is listed as a four over four LC. That is the same as some of the older patterns that you might see that are C8F. The L or the four over four LC is just a better example. It gives you more information on exactly what the cable is that we're doing. So I've got a little sample here that I'll go over to show you. I've got all of my markers set up. I have done my two rows of garter stitch. I also want to mention that this, these fingerless mitts are worked from the top down, so from the top of your hand down. When you cast on, you can use a two needle method or the one needle long tail cast on. You want to kind of take into consideration the width of the hand of the person that you're making it for. If they have a little bit larger hands, you might want to make that cast on a little bit looser so that it's more comfortable for them. For me, the two needle method was great um, for my hands and felt pretty comfortable. Um, okay, so we've set this up. We have all of our stitches on. I have my stitch markers marking the area. I just want to review real quick how we make that cable twist. So the first part of the pattern, we have a, the garter edge that's right around the end. And on the fingerless mitts, this is one that we've blocked but haven't seamed up yet. You can see that garter edge right here. And this just gives more detail to the finished glove. And it also gives us an area to seam up without taking away from the cable detail in the center. Okay. So I've cast, or I've knitted three for this edge here. Then we go into the reverse stockinette. In the pattern, remember when you see SM, it means slide the marker. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and purl the next three stitches. Now we're to the cable area. And I will be using my cable needle. That's this one right here and I slide the first four stitches, that's the four, the first four in the four over four. I'm gonna slide those first four stitches onto my cable needle. I have the center area here, I'm gonna hold that down. And now I knit the second set of four off of the back needle here. Then I bring this one back up. And you can either slide these back onto the working needle or you can just knit straight from the cable needle. I prefer just to knit straight from the cable needle. And when you're moving these around, just make sure that you don't get any extra yarn overs by getting snagged on one of the other needles. Just pay attention and make sure that when you're done, you still have the remaining eight stitches on your working needle. So for me, I just kind of go back here, look where the stitch marker was before, and make sure that I have the eight stitches. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've finished that twist. So I just kind of wanted to review. If you need more information on that, we have that in our other episodes in this knit along. Okay, so that is how we do the twist. Now, for the fingerless mitts, you go ahead and continue the cable pattern repeats one through eight until you have eight twists in your pattern. Then you want to go ahead and knit four rows of garter stitch and that is going to be the portion that's right here. Um, let me show you. That is the portion that comes right here. If you have somebody with thicker arms you might want to do a loose bind off. 
If they're thinner arms, you might want to do just a normal or a little bit tighter bind off. Make it customizable for the person that's going to be wearing these. But this is how it looks after it's seamed up. <clears throat> so we have cast on, we have worked our garter ridges here, and this is worked top down. We've done our cable twists. We've done four rows of garter stitch at the end and bound off. Now your piece should look something similar to this. So once your project, your fingerless mitts have been blocked and dried completely, and don't be afraid if they shrink up a little bit, because remember how I showed you before, they stretch way out and then boom, they kind of come in on themselves after they've dried. We need to seam them up. Now in the pattern, I give instructions for leaving a long tail when you cast on, so you have some working yarn, and leaving a bit of yardage behind on your tail um, after you've bound off, and you can use those to seam up the project. But because I want you guys to be able to see this, I have woven in some contrasting yarn so I can give you a better visual of how we are gonna seam these up. Now I'm taking a look here. This is my thicker end. This is where I bound off. So this is where I'm gonna have my longer tail. I'm going to start seaming here. I'm gonna seam up to here and lean, and stop when I have about two inches from the edge here. So I'm gonna stop right about here. And I'll show you how we do this. It's called a mattress stitch, and it um, is a hidden stitch. So by using this pink yarn, you probably won't be able to see it. If I do it right, you won't be able to see it when it's all done. Okay, so now we're working sideways. In the cowl, when we seamed it up, we seamed it up this way. On the fingerless mitts, we're seaming it up this way. So we're gonna be using the ridges of our garter stitch edge as our guide this time, and we're going backwards this way. It's a little bit different, but it's still the same kind of philosophy. Okay, so I'm gonna go across here. This is where my um, last tail left off, and I'm gonna stick my needle in here. I want to give myself a little bit of room here because I, um, I want to have that extra space between these stitches. Okay. Before, in the cowl, we followed the edge line of our last stitching and made sure we matched up the cables. This time, we're looking at the same thing on both sides, so we wanna make sure that we're staying in the same ridge of stitches. And I'm looking at this column right here. In our pattern, this would be the second garter stitch, so the second stitch on each row. That's what I'm gonna line this up with. And I'm gonna go down and under and make sure you can see this really well. And I'm coming through this way. I'm, I'm capturing this ridge right here. Okay, then I'm gonna jump over to this side and I'm capturing, there's the first one, here's the second one, and I'm going through there and capturing that bump right there. I'm at the edge, this is gonna be the portion that's on my forearm. So I want a little bit of strength here because this is gonna be where it tugs and pulls and has the most um, opportunity to slide out. So I wanna be pretty tight in here and I'm going through every stitch. There we go, the second one over. Go all the way through and out. Come back over here. There's the second one over. Quite a bit here, let me pull that there. Okay. As I get down a little bit, then I can start going like every other stitch, but just in this beginning, I wanna capture every stitch. I wanna make sure that these are lining up so I don't get off. Let's go right through here. And I'm gonna down through here. And feel free to do every stitch if you want in your project, whatever looks best in your eye. I am um, jumping down every other stitch at this portion. So let's see here, go in here, grab that one. And then also keep an eye out that you know, I don't have any major gaps here. Check this every now and then to make sure that everything is lining up. 
Sometimes our eyes play tricks on us and we get a little off. It's always great to take that double check. And I'm doing this very loose. In the end, I will cinch it up, but I just kind of want to let you see how I'm going back and forth in this zigzag pattern. Kind of over-exaggerating these stitches so that you can see and then it's like magic at the end when you pull it all up. So it was funny when I was making the cowl and I was about halfway through, I had it sitting on the armchair of my um, recliner at home while I was knitting on it. And I looked down and I was like, hey, that's the same width as my forearm. And then I had this great idea. I wonder if I just turned it sideways and seamed it up if I could have a fingerless mitt. And so I went ahead and tried it and it worked and everybody liked it. So we decided to go ahead and throw it in this pattern and add it with the cowl. I just, it just happened. It was organically created. <laughs> okay, I wanna double check two. I know I'm getting closer to the end. I wanna kinda eyeball where that two inch mark is. So I've got about another inch and a half to go. And then we'll bind off here to leave. Well, the reason why we're not going all the way down to the end is because we're leaving an opening for our thumb. So we can just easily slide our thumb in. We didn't have to do any fancy uh, work of binding off stitches and casting on new to make that thumb hole. We're actually building the thumb hole into our seam. Just makes it a lot easier and great for beginners. So as you're seaming up, you don't have to stick to the measurements that I gave you on where to make your thumb hole. Whatever's comfortable for you. If you want it thicker in this area here right above your thumb, you can go ahead and stop further down and then seam up more on this side. I just stopped at two inches and then a half an inch down here and left an inch and a half open for my thumb. But you test it out, feel free to modify however you would like. So I'm gonna stop right about here and then I'm gonna cinch this up and show you what that looks like. As I pull on this, you'll see those stitches start to disappear. That is the magic of the mattress stitch because as you pull, it sucks all those stitches in. Don't pull too tight that you break your yarn. That's a big no-no, but you'll feel it as you go along. Okay, but you want that yarn to hide I do see a couple of spots there where I could have gone a little bit deeper, but you'll be using the same color yarn and you won't be able to see those. And I wanna show you what it looks like on the other side. That's what it looks like on the other side. You have this ridge here. There's where your stitches were. Okay, this is where I left off here. So I like to come back Again, this is another area when I where I want to reinforce my stitches because this is gonna be riding right along the thumb. There's gonna be some pull and some stretch on there. So I'm gonna do a whip stitch coming back like this. And that's gonna secure this area right here and give it more strength. Then when I'm done with that, I'll just simply weave this in a couple of times, hide a bunch of extra yarn in here in case I ever need to do some repairs. And then we'll clip that off. Okay. Like I said, I used contrasting yarn on here and I could have done that a little bit tighter and you wouldn't see those little specks in there. But you'll be using the same color yarn so you won't be able to see this. Now we want to seam up this portion of our mitt and your tail will be hanging out here. This will be your cast on edge. So this will be the tail that you left when you cast on the project. So I'm just weaving this in here so I can show you how to do this stitch. Again, it's the same process. We're going to come through here and we're going to grab the second stitch over here and pull it tight and then come back here and pull it tight. And that's why, that's why it's not hiding. I don't have any tension on that, on that end of it. Okay, and I only wanna do this for like a half of an inch because I gotta leave that opening. There we go, now it's nice and tight. And go back in. 
And then we do the same thing as before, flip it inside out. And now I'm gonna do a whip stitch right here. Make sure it's nice and secure. And weave in my ends. And that is how you seam up your fingerless mitt. Okay, let's go ahead and try on. Thank you so much for joining me for this knit along. I really hope you found this beginner cable pattern easy to understand and follow. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. I'd love to hear your stories and your experiences with cable knitting. Be sure to try out the stitch marker trick. It's a great tip for tracking your progress. Let me know if this works for you. Remember, you can get a kit with the printed pattern and yarn at OneBigHappy.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified every time we have a new video. Happy knitting!